Hey crew, so you got a 3D part you want to print. First thing you're going to want to do is go up to File, Export, and then CAD Format. Once that window pops up, you want to make sure that you're saving in a folder that is your folder somewhere on the group drive. Probably in the Genota Course CAD folders or CAD 2, wherever you're in. And then we're going to want to switch our file type to an STL. STL files. Now if it's the first time you've saved, you're also going to want to go to the options button because we've got to make sure that we're exporting in millimeters and with a high resolution. Okay, so make sure both of those are set to millimeters and then the high resolution. Click OK and once again saving it where you know you can access it. Click Save and there you go. You've just created the STL that we can now use in the print slicing software. So let's switch over to that. Prusa Slicer. Little black and orange circle symbol. All right, once Prusa opens, Prusa Slicer opens, you might get a box about doing an update. Don't worry about it. Uh, we can't do any updates ourselves. We have to have the IT department do those for us. We can cancel out of this window. And some of you might have the configuration wizard automatically open. Just hang out there. For those of us that don't, we're going to go to Menu, Configuration, Configuration Wizard. And that will bring us back into how this software is kind of set up. And what we may need to do is you do not have to log into anything, just optional. Uh, configuration Sources, I these are the two that we want to have checked. We're going to then go to Prusa Research once it loads. There we go. Uh, by default, the MK4 here, is, we're going to uncheck that because I think it is checked when it first opens. So we're going to uncheck that one and then check the first box on the third machine. MK4 Input Shaper, not four, the first one's a 4S. They all look similar, but the MK4 is what we have at school couple of those, so check that box please. And then we'll scroll down to the MK3 family. Oh, I went right by it. There it is, MK3 family. And we're going to check the box in the first one. Those are what most of the printers in the classroom are, MK3S pluses. Then on the left side, we're going to go down to Prusa Research SLA. These are like liquid 3D printers. They use a liquid resin. We do not have any of those. We're going to uncheck that. We don't want that as an option even. Then we should be able to jump down to filaments. We can probably just check all these Prusaments. That might be the easiest thing to say. These are just all the default filaments that we can get from Prusa. Um, and we might have some or all at any given time, but we can just check them all for now. And then we can click finish. And if it didn't switch over to the MK3 platter, kind of look at the that board. Um, right here is where the drop is, the switch between printers. Most of the machines are MK3s. We have a couple of MK4s, and depending on how old this video is, um, main thing is make sure you just know which printers you'll be using. And you can ask me if needed. The other big thing with printers is what print setting we're going to run, so what layer thicknesses. So 15s or 20s are what you're going to use most of the time. This is the button that we use to bring in our STL file. So we're going to click on that and then go find that file that you created or whatever it is that you want to print. So click on it and then open. Brings it in. Now it might not be the right orientation, so we got to rotate it often. That's the button on the left, and then you can rotate whichever direction you need to make it sit right or print the best, and that's just a choice you got to make. And there's also a button on the left there that just says, uh, choose what surface you want to have it lay flat down onto. And that's a really easy button to use to just get the make sure the bottom is the bottom, for example. Once we have it set the way we want it, once again we'll go over and look at that print quality and you know, like I said 15s if it's a little more curvy or has hollow spots you maybe need to fill in. 20 if it's kind of a box shape. Um, and really those are the two we use the most. Then we're also going to set what filament we're using. If you're not sure, go over and look at the machines to see what's on them. And then support, that's a choice you just got to, you know, decide if you 
has overhanging surfaces or if it has uh, holes cut through it, you're going to probably want some kind of support. And it's probably safer to put them on just to see what you get when you slice it here in just a minute. So for support, every wear is the one we use the most, we use most of the time. And then we can hit that slice now button at the bottom and sure enough. The slicing software thinks we need some support, but I don't like that style support as much. So we're going to go up to print settings, go over to the other side, click advanced, go back to the left, click on support material, and then just a little bit down, you'll see the box that says grid. We're going to switch that to organic. Just a much better print support print style. Back to the platter button or platter menu. And then back on the bottom right, slice now one more time, which will give us our updated supports. You'll see they kind of look like little tree branches and really, really awesome support system. Easy to break off, doesn't affect the surface quality, really handy. So all that looks pretty good. So the, like the way the support's looking there. So we need to go over to the printers then and get an SD card out of that. And while we're at the printer, we're also going to take a look and just double or triple check that we have the filament that we want on there. In this case, you can see a PLA. So it's important to know what filament is on the printer every time you print and how much is on there. But then we'll grab the SD card out of the printer and then just pull off to the left there. And then on Prusa Slicer, you're going to see a little button show up in the bottom right corner. Once I swing over there, little tiny button in the corner, a little orange box, computer symbol, and that means export to SD card. If I go put my mouse on that here in just a minute. There we go, click on it, pops a window up, which is automatically going to be saving the G code to our SD card. Once again, right to the SD card is fine. And then eject button. Go back over to the 3D printers. And take that SD card and make sure you have the brass pins showing. And then that pushes back into the Prusa printer. Just push all the way till it bottoms out, and you'll see it'll load into the files, but we're not quite ready yet. We actually need to take the green platter off and clean it quick before we print. So with both hands, lift up on the front a little bit, and then slide that green sheet out towards you. Hit it with a squirt or two of the isopropyl alcohol, a couple of Kleenexes, and then we'll wipe that all down to make sure it's a nice clean surface. Make sure all the old plastic was taken off first. Should have mentioned that a little earlier. So should be a nice, clean, smooth surface to print with. And then we set the green platter kind of back on the back edge first, lining those pins up, and then guide it down. Just be careful not to let it slap too hard. Once that's on, we center click the knob, scroll down to print from SD. Not too fast on the dial, but center click for selection. Scroll down to your file, center click again, and if it does say firmware, just click one more time, and that finally starts it. And you should be off and printing. Make sure you come back and check the first layer, though, please, in about five minutes. That's when most issues do occur. Thanks for watching.